Hey guys, here today with another Sure Gaurav Knife Notes video. This one is on the F7 Bronze Full Custom by Sergei Sure Gaurav. Now, just like the 111 Navy video that I had done recently, this is another knife on loan from a friend. I really appreciate the opportunity and I'm just incredibly grateful for the chance to uh, have these knives and take a look at them for you and do these uh, knife notes videos. Uh, it's just an incredible variation in the designs and knives that Sergey puts out. So it's really interesting to see every one of them. And uh, this is the first time that I've actually seen one of the Bolster F7s in person. So I think this video will be really exciting today. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the kind of history of the F7. Uh, since a lot, I get a lot of questions about, you know, why is this not called an F7? Why is, why is you know, that not called the F95? And uh, I think we have to start at the F95 first, you know, the F95 being the flipper 95, 95 uh, corresponding to the blade length of the blade. Now the F7 also has the same blade length and the same overall profile as the 95, uh, 95 millimeter blade. However, um, when Sergei came out with the liner lock version of the F95, uh, he couldn't call it the F95 because, you know, one's a liner lock and one's a frame lock. And he wanted to differentiate uh, those models a bit. So he came up with the name F3. And subsequently, uh, later down the road, uh, there was a custom division knife. Uh, it was a titanium 95 with uh, three contoured handles, uh, unique blade shape, and that back uh, titanium backspacer. Because that was so much different, I guess he decided to name that the F5 um, and started that tradition of kind of having this odd number naming scheme for knives in the size range. We then have the next iteration of that, the F7, uh, being a full custom version. Uh, I believe Sergei decided to come up with the F7 name when he decided to overhaul his full custom F95 type design. And that's really what you see here. The F7 blade on the, the, the blade on the F7 has a, a distinctly different profile than the F95. The backspacer is distinctly different than what you see on any other knife, including the F5 and the Hati and the F and F3. So I think that's really what Sergei wanted to. Uh, kind of you know bring to the table when he ushered in the new the new F7 model here, and unlike the F95 and the F3, there are multiple versions of the F7 design. One that's a frame lock, as you can see right here, which is uh, my knife right here. This one is a frame lock. There are liner lock versions of the F7, and then we have bolster versions of the F7, which are also liner locks as well. So there's a lot of variation in the F7 uh, line, uh, F7 lineup and variants, and this one right here obviously is a bolstered version, uh, the F7 bronze. So let, let's go ahead and take a look at the coin here. Now this coin has the Shurgarov logo on it, and uh, this being kind of a more fancy knife with the materials, you can see here that the coin has a satin finish on it, which is uh, really nice and adds some contrast to it. So here you can see it says F7 Bronze. The blade is Mike Norris Damascus. We have a carbon plate uh, bronze weave carbon fiber handle, and the pivot system is Sergei's double row roller bearing system. You can see here that he electro penciled in his signature. This one's a little bit messy, kind of a... Uh, Kind of unfortunate here, but you can also see that the knife was made in August of 2017. This knife was actually made for TKI, oh not TKI, sorry, USN, I believe uh, G9 actually. I was actually at the show that this knife was uh, available for auction, so that's really cool to kind of revisit this knife again. Kind of brings me back. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of talk about the specs of the knife. Unfortunately, I don't have a normal F95 to compare it to. I only have another F7. This one's a frame lock, uh, so really not much to talk about here. But as you can see, you know, this is a liner, liner lock with a bolster, and my knife is a frame lock. So unfortunately, I don't have a normal 95 to compare it to. But you're just gonna have to trust me on this one that uh, the the dimensions of it are pretty much exactly the same as an F95. But what about the weight? You know, these, you know, it's a liner lock, so I would expect it to weigh more than a frame lock. Um, there is intense skeletonization going in, uh, going on in the handle. However, we do have a solid bronze backspacer with this bronze bolster as well. So I can expect it to be pretty hefty here. So uh, let's take a look. We're, we're looking at around 
six ounces, almost six ounces, 5.95 ounces for this bolster uh, bronze knife. And uh, compare that to my frame lock, which is 4.89. So more than a solid ounce more. So a very, very uh, impressive heft to it. Uh, but actually I think, you know, with the materials, it kind of uh, works in, in the favor of this knife. Uh, this is definitely kind of a, a fancier custom here, as you can see. Now let's take a look at this blade here. Uh, unfortunately, I really wish I had a normal F95 blade to kind of show you the difference here. But the F7 has a very wide sloping belly as opposed to the F95, which has a, a straighter uh, edge here on the bottom before the belly starts. Uh, so kind of a much more pointier and aggressive looking blade. We also see here that we have a cutout. And uh, this cutout, while actually being a little bit less complex than what you see on some of the custom division knives, such as the uh, Hati Bronze and the F3 Bolster, um, this is a unique cutout and is, is not just borrowed uh, for the Hati Bronze, for example. So this cutout is completely unique to the F7, and I, I really like how uh, there's kind of this recessed area going on on both sides and how it's just not complete skeletalization. Um, I really like how Sergei thinks of those kinds of features as opposed to, you know, just directly drilling out the entire area here. I think it adds a little bit of character. We also have an incredibly long uh, swedge that uh, runs from, you know, you know, just a little bit past the tip of the blade all the way back to the jimping on both sides. And this effectively causes the, uh, the jimping up here on top to have a triangular shape. So an incredibly unique shape and something that we actually had seen uh, borrowed when the Neon Zero was designed. We have that similar very long running swedge that comes out and uh, creates a triangular shape for the jimping here. Uh, another thing that you might notice is that the blade profile on the Neon Zero and the F3NS is actually the same blade profile that is used on the F7, just shrunken down. Um, everything is there from that long swedge with the triangular jimping to this very you know wide sloping belly here. No blade cut out, obviously, but um, the F7 blade uh, shrunk down. It was basically, I think, the kind of design inspiration for the Neon Zero blade and the F3NS as well, which I think is really cool. It really, really hammers home the point that um, features from the customs flow down to the custom divisions and then custom division to the productions. But anyways, um, this blade, again, has that Mike Norris Damascus. Um, kind of looks like the raindrop pattern, not really sure. Um, I'm not too privy about all of the patterns, so I can't really name this one off the top of my head, but uh, really nice etching on here. And as you can see, uh, the, the contrast is, is on that darker side with the, the um, non-stainless steel providing most of the color for this blade. The jipping on top, again, is uh, this jipping that's, I've really only seen on the full customs. It's kind of like the, it's kind of wider than what you see on the normal production knives, but it's not as wide as uh, what you see on the Neon Zero here, which I think is almost completely non-functional. This, this jimping here has uh, definitely a good amount of bite to it, and I, I think this is some of the best jimping that Sergey has designed. Uh, it's functional, yet uh, very aesthetically pleasing. We also have a flipper tab that is uh, much more sculpted, you can see here how it kind of tapers on into the middle here uh, in the Ricasso area. Uh, that's something that's a little bit different than what you see on the F95 as well. So overall, really, really interesting blade. Um, Damascus usually, usually isn't my thing, but this pattern I think is uh, pretty neat. And uh, again, I love the cutout on these uh, F the F7 blades. Um, the cutout version I think is the much cooler version to own. Now moving on to the handle here, you can see that this is the bolster version. Now this bolster is uh, solid bronze, which is uh, incredibly nice. If you take a look closely, you can see that it has the silk milling running across the middle portion of it. This handle is 3D sculpted, including the bolsters and the carbon fiber scales here. So really nice uh, feel in the hand when you're holding it. The pivot collar on this knife, you know, being made in 2017, has the older style, smaller uh, pivot screw. 
the screw of course is indexed uh, with so this is the uh, faux show side of the screw of the uh, the pivot assembly and uh, if you notice here on the zirconium pivot collar there also is uh, this interesting dot milling um, with these newer knives with the larger pivot screws uh, the pivot collar diameter has been reduced so you really don't get that mil there's really no chance for Sergei to do milling on that anymore um, but these older knives um, you, you often see some of the fancier ones have milling on the pivot collar and this one has a nice uh, kind of dotted line pattern here and that goes really well with the uh, zirconium I think since the zirconium is kind of satin finished catches light you know incredibly well and uh, something uh, uh, to notice as well, you can see here that the flats of the pivot screw here are satin finished. So again, Sergei really doesn't leave anything untouched here. We even have satin finishing here on the steel pivot screw. Now moving back to the handle, you can see uh, that the scale here is done in carbon and fi weave carbon fiber with bronze dust infused in it. We've seen this uh, carbon fiber be used in a couple other knives, um, notably the 111 bronze uh, with the same carbon fiber here. And uh, it, it's really nice. I really like the carbon fiber, carbon fiber that has carbon, sorry, carbon plate carbon fiber that has these metallic dusts in them. And uh, this bronze one is no exception. You can see here that the scales line of uh, the bolsters line up very well with the carbon fiber scales here as well really nice mating of the surfaces. And if we take a look on the other side of the handle, we can see the actual pivot screw here. Again, just like the uh, all other custom knives, this has Sergei's proprietary duck foot pivot screws that symbolize that he's the only one that's allowed to work on these knives in the workshop. Um, nobody else has the set of tools uh, except him. So it's, I think it's a really interesting thing. I think it's really cool, but at the same time, it would be nice to be able to service your knives. And unfortunately, Sergey will not provide those bits uh, toward that exact reason. But as we can see, this knife is also a liner lock. So the, there is no lock bar cutout that's visible on the side, just the same bolsters with the silk milling on it and the carbon fiber scale here. We can see that the clip is also skeletonized, which matches really well with the cutout in the blade. And this clip is incredibly well contoured. There's just a lot of lines going on here. Let's take a look real closely. You can see the top is curved here. Uh, there's this line that runs across the middle of the uh, clip that intersects with the two skeletonization windows. This really well done clip, uh, especially when you compare it to the one on the normal F95. The screw back here for the clip is done in zirconium with a satin finish uh, that kind of matches the finish on the pivot collars as well. Really nice material and uh, kind of goes along with that black and bronze theme we have going on here with this knife. Now lastly here you can see the back spacer. Now the back spacer for this knife is a solid piece of bronze with uh, some light patina going on here. I, actually I want to really call it patina. Um, this is just naturally aged bronze. Um, really cool and it provides a really nice place for the back spacer being so wide. Now if you see here um, the back spacer kind of lines up with the liners here and it actually kind of sits on top of the liners. Um, one interesting thing to note, however, is if you take a look here closely, you can see that the kind of V-shaped cut here in the backspacer, the edges on the side don't really line up with the liners. Same thing here as well with the liners here at the bottom of the backspacer. Now, that might seem like kind of an oversight by Sergey, but if you take a look at some of the knives in the past and then some of the knives in the future, um, you, you know, past this knife, they actually do line up um, both the frame lock and the liner lock version of the F7. So you have to wonder why did these suddenly become, uh, I guess, not uh, aligned? Was it uh, Sergey simply messing up? Um, I actually asked Sergey this uh, a couple shows ago, and he said that he just wanted to try something new. And uh, <laughs> once people noticed it, they really didn't receive it very well. So he quickly went back and reverted it. However, um, because of that, 
if you you'll see a couple of customs in this 2000 late 2017 2018 time period where the back spacers will not line up with the liners and uh I guess you could call it uh, call it an interesting design quirk and uh, kind of something that didn't very didn't last very long, but uh, just something another cool, interesting Shirogrov tidbit. As you can see here, the blade sits inside of the backspacer. There, there is a lot of space going on though, um, considering the backspacer is so large. But uh, again, that's just the that's just the design of the F7. If you take a look here, you can see in the backspacer we have that signature. Um, I actually believe really, I forgot to show off the signature on the 111 Navy, unfortunately. But uh, again, this is something that Sergei does on all of his full customs is he'll, he'll sign the backspacer here on the inside just as a, a nice personal touch. And he'll also date the manufacturer uh, date of the knife just uh, same what, as is what is on the coin. But as you can see here, we have that groove on the inside of the F7 backspacer that the blade sits into. That just kind of shows off the uh, tolerance uh, the tolerances that Sergei holds his knives to. Now, if you take a look at the inside, you can see there's also extreme skeletonization, uh, even more extreme than what you see on the, uh, you know, recent production F95s and uh, the cuts and divisions as well. As you can see here, there's a very long, uh, wide zigzag that, and the entire portion, bottom portion here of the knife is completely skeletonized. If you can take a look here as well, you can even see that the uh, lock bar has some uh, or sorry, the liner lock has some skeletonization going on as well, which uh, definitely helps cut down on the weight of this knife, uh, seeing as though there's some pretty heavy materials involved. Uh, just like any liner lock that Shirogorov does, um, there is a lock bar insert since the liner is titanium. However, uh, this one is press fit in because uh, I believe the reason for this is because the liner is so thin compared to a frame lock, there just isn't enough thread engagement uh, if the lock bar insert was uh, drilled. So unfortunately, you're, you're left with a lock bar that is press fit. However, you know, if you were to send this knife in for service, Sergei would have to open it up anyways with this tool. So it's kind of a moot point, but uh, just something interesting. You would expect that perhaps maybe on the full customs that this knife would have a lock bar insert screw. But otherwise, um, you can see here on top, this is using that double row roller bearing system. And of course that results in a very nice and smooth action and quick flip. Now this knife does, uh, you can definitely feel the layers of the Damascus on it, which is uh, my you know top reason for choosing a mono steel like you know S125 or S90 or M390. But uh, Sergei does mask off the pivot area before he does the etching. So uh, it feel like it could definitely be worse, but this definitely is a knife that just needs to be broken in a little bit. And uh, I'm sure once the Damascus wears, or the, the detent ball wears a track in the Damascus, um, it'll be just incredibly smooth, just like all the other customs. But overall, um, the F7 design is, again, my personal favorite, and I absolutely love my F7 uh, titanium. The clip is gorgeous. The blade is gorgeous. The handles always have something interesting going on, and that, that you know, really chunky backspacer that's also smooth and sleek at the same time. It's, it just is incredibly different than the F95, but at the same time also kind of feels like home as well, since I had carried an F95 and a hot tea before uh, obtaining my F7. So really cool knife that we have here, and I really appreciate the opportunity again to uh, bring us a video to you guys, and uh, hopefully looking forward to uh, do my knives and uh, get some more customs and uh, any pretty much any Shirogrov knife. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video, and uh, hope we see you guys next time, and hope you guys enjoy your day as well. See ya.